Hello out there, Keto family. My name is Sherry. I am Keto on a Budget. I do weekly budget grocery hauls, weekly meal preps, what I eat, budgets, budget tips, and whatever else. Weeks, I'm doing a week review today, so I'm on my way to do an Instacart shop, and I figured I would chat while I'm driving. So, and I promise I'm paying attention to the road. But um, to start off with, I wanted to mention a couple of things that I'm doing and I'm involved in. One of them is an accountability collab that was started by Life Adventures in Keto. And it is a, basically a collab of a bunch of us that are, want to hold each other accountable and want to be accountable. So we're posting at least minimum weekly um, videos on you know what we're doing and tips on how to how to maintain keto throughout the month of October and the other thing that I'm involved in is in it's called keto through the holidays and it was started by Wendy Barron and her video is also in the collab so you can check out that link below you can also check out the link to the Facebook group that she started below and basically this group is a support group to keep each other, you know, lift each other and, and support each other through the holidays. And it's going from August, August, October 1st through January 1st. And basically we're going to lift each other up, we're going to support each other, be accountable, you know, post our wins, um, our struggles and everything going on so that we can lift each other up and support each other through the holidays. For the, the, uh, those of us who want to stay keto throughout the holiday season. And a lot of us tend to give up keto at least through the holidays, through Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, because of all the you know the family get-togethers, the parties, the expectations that families put on us to eat their goodies through the holidays. And those of us that want to maintain that that keto lifestyle without you know destroying our body, well, not really destroying, but you know a lot. Of there's a lot of us, myself included, there, there are certain things that I eat when I cheat that cause me pain because I have inflammation issues. I haven't been diagnosed with a, um, an inflammatory disease, but I do have, I've noticed that the pain in my hips, knees, and shoulders have gone since I've started the ketogenic lifestyle. So I don't want those. I noticed that the pain, I still have pain in my knees because I have one joint, my right knee, that is bone on bone. There is no cartilage in between those those knees. I have, I had um, hyaluronic gel injections last year. It's been almost a year since I had that. And I improved probably about 75 to 80% and then it fell back to about 50 to 60% and I've maintained that so far. I can walk up and down stairs better, although I do have some pain doing that, but it is very minimal and I can stand it easily. Uh, my biggest issue with my legs is I've noticed a lot of weakness in my muscles, so I am trying to work on that. I need to get back in the gym. But this week, um, let's see what's going on this week. I started these collabs and these journeys on Tuesday. So Monday was September 30th. I, what I can remember, I did okay on Tuesday. On Monday, I did not fast. I decided, I have decided to start fasting. Intermittent fasting, 16 hours a day with one 24 hour fast on Thursday into Friday. Now, those days that I did the 24 hour fast, I will not fast on the day before, on Wednesday night, and I'm not fasting on Friday night. So, because I've done that 24 hour, you know, long term fast, so I want, so I know in those, that, that three day period, I'm not getting enough protein in, and I have to be more protein centric with my diet because I've had the gastric bypass, and protein is a huge issue because I can't sit there and eat an entire steak in one meal. So, and I can't eat a double cheeseburger. I can eat a single cheeseburger. So my stomach is very, very, very much smaller and I also have nutrient issues. So that's why I'm doing 16 
power fast running through the so I'm giving myself an 18 an eight hour window to get those nutrients in. But that days that I'm doing the 24 hour fast, I know that I'm going to be struggling to get enough protein in in that three day period. So I've chosen not to fast on Wednesday and not to fast on Friday. But my 24 hour fast starts at right after lunch on Thursday and ends at lunch on Friday. So I will be fasting tonight for my 16 hour and I will not have anything until I'm at church tomorrow. So yeah, I will be making my coffee and putting it in my little hot container and drinking it once I can break my fast at church. Let's see. Um, Tuesday, I did very, very well with that fast. I fasted right after, I didn't start my fast until 8 o'clock, so I ended it at around noon. I think it started at 11.30, 7.30, so I ended it at, well, I didn't end it until noon, so it was like, you know, 16 and a half hours. But I did very well, and I was very impressed with myself, and I did not fast on Wednesday. I maintained the... The diet very well. Um, I ate well. I had a few bars. Wednesday night was kind of, yeah. I discovered Rebel cookies and cream ice cream, and I absolutely loved it. It was awesome. And I still have half a container left, so I had some Tuesday night, and then I had another serving on Wednesday night. So it's still in the fridge. I was gonna have some last night, and I forgot about it. So. Chris set it out. So I figured, eh, what the heck. So I had a, a, the original keto bar instead. Which is another one like that. But I'm trying to stretch them out and make them last. So, my 24 hour fast on Thursday, it went great. I started it at 11.30. Right after lunch on Thursday. And ended it at 11.30 yesterday. I did have my hunger issues a few times, but I'm, when I'm fasting like that, I'm drinking constantly, and I think that helps. I have my water with my uh, stir water enhancer, and that is a water enhancer that is only used stevia for a sweetener. So, I know I'm not breaking a fast with that. But I forego my zip fizz during that time, so I get my electrolytes in with the keto chow um, fasting drops. That's how I get my electrolytes in. I also keep sitting with me, and if I'm getting hungry, then I will take a pinch of salt. And I did not have to do that. I think I had enough electrolytes because I wasn't getting headachy or shaky or anything like that during that fast. And I didn't really get that hungry. I think once, and then I just drank. Um, I drank the water with some like, casting drops in it. And I think that's probably what curbed that hunger. So. It was pretty cool. I ended it very easily. I was kind of rushing out the door, so I grabbed some egg bake that I had baked for the guys for Thursday night their dinner. And one of my keto biscuits. It was so good. It's a little teeny, I, I made a little teeny tiny, so. So I broke my fast with that. Um, I don't worry that much about what I'm breaking my fast with if I'm only doing a 24 hour. If I'm doing longer than a 24 hour, I will only break it with bone broth. So, I've made a habit now of making sure I have bone broth in the pantry if I'm doing a long-term fast. And I will be doing a minimum 48-hour fast at the end of this month. So, I have to kind of plan that out. I have to look and see what day's the end of the month. So, it's probably going to be, I think the 31st is on a Thursday. So, I will be doing a Wednesday and Thursday and breaking it Friday morning fast. Yeah, that works for me. Um, let's see what's going on still on the struggle bus a little bit financially but it's getting better I think making that budget out a month in advance has helped a lot I didn't there's one bill that I could not pay yesterday because I lent my son $25 to help them pay their rent, but he's going to pay me back, so I will be able to pay that this coming up week. And that's one child I don't have to worry about paying me back. He will pay me back. The other son, if I give it to them, if I lend it to them, I may as well not worry about it. Or 
worry about getting it back because I ain't going to get it back. Which is fine. I would not let my other son pay me back at all if I didn't need the money and I was on this debt-free journey. So that's my goal is to try to get out of debt. I'm behind on several bills, so I'm trying to get those caught up. But as Dave Ramsey mentions in his, you take care of your, your food first, then your housing, your house, which is your your mortgage or rent and utilities, your vehicle, so that you can get to your job. So if need be, we can always go down to one vehicle, but both of our vehicles are paid off and our insurance is very reasonable for two cars for both of us who've never had, haven't had accidents in 10 plus years. So that's always a bonus. This coming up week though, yeah. This coming up week, let's see, I'm going to do a budget challenge for myself and I'm going to show you how you can get a week, week's worth of groceries for $50. And since pretty much everybody has a Walmart, it's probably going to be a Walmart budget thing. So I'm going to show you how you can get keto, budget, you can stay keto on a budget of $50 and still get a week's worth of groceries. And there you go. This will assume though that you have basic pantry items such as spices and those kind of things. Yeah. But this will include meat and veggies and drinks and cheese and eggs. So, that is going to be a challenge that I'm going to make myself. And, yeah. And I'm feeding three people. So I want to show you how you can still be keto on a very, very strict, tight budget. I know, I know a lot of people have questions. I've seen it on, on other channels. A lot of people have questions about you know, this lifestyle and oh, you know, the junk food is so much cheaper and yeah, but the junk food, think about it. When you're eating a ketogenic diet, you stay full longer, you are more satiated, you don't eat as often, you tend to snack a lot less, but if you're eating the SAD diet, parentheses, standard American diet, in parentheses, you eat junk food, you'll eat those little Debbie snack cakes, but an hour later you're hungry again, so you eat another one. And then you eat a bag of chips, and then you eat, I mean, think about it. Are you really, really saving money on that sad diet? Because those junk food items are so much cheaper? Because you can buy a box of Debbie snack cakes for, actually I don't think you can buy any more for 99 cents anymore. I think it's anywhere from $1.29 to $1.99, depending on what you get. So, and then a bag of chips. I mean, the prices on those things are going up too. But I'm going to show you that you can do this and be satiated and be full on a strict budget. So, challenge to myself and to you. So, I'm going to end this video. I'm getting close to my shop. I'm going to be. I'm going to try to be busy this afternoon getting some shops. I mean. To get the extra money in so that it will help get the bills caught up and get us get our emergency savings fund saved up. So I'm sitting there looking and we got a washer and dryer that is about 10 years old. And we have a refrigerator that is going on eight years old. So I can anticipate those items are going to be breaking down in the next couple of years. So I need to get this under control. And you never know when the car's gonna break down. I mean, look what happened to my air conditioning. So, anyway, I'm gonna end this video with letting you know, you, you are beautiful. You are worthy, you are awesome, you are a rock star. And yeah, that's you I'm talking to. So you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you all next video. Toodles.